This video was created as the second video in a series of six to teach faculty how to navigate in the e-learning learning management system. This particular video will cover the left navigation bar and briefly cover each of the links in this navigation area. The at a glance page, which is the page that we're currently viewing, is the main page that both students and faculty by default will enter once they log into their respective courses. This page is primarily used by the students. This is a course overview page for the students. It covers the next events based off of the due dates you place in assignments, readings, or any homework or projects. It covers the latest news that is posted. There is a news and discussion area. There's a resources area, a coursework area, and a calendar feature. Each of the elements on this page are populated by the work you do, mainly found in the coursework and course resources area, which we will cover later in other videos. I want to direct your attention to the center screen, which notes Unit 1. When you click the drop-down arrow, this particular template has 16 units. They can be changed to weeks or chapters or modules, however you uh, lay out your course. But each week, as the dates pass, the next unit will appear and the student will see all of the homework, resources, coursework, or news and discussions for that week. So the student is able to click ahead in the course and actually see what is a part of the assignments or resources or coursework for this particular semester course. Also, there are navigation arrows which take you back one unit or forward one unit. And again, this page is primarily used by the students. The next link is the Start Here menu. This is an area where you meet your professor. You will edit the content. Notice this is hidden, but once you place your mouse cursor up on the bar next to the separator horizontal line, you will get an Edit Content link but you will be able to edit this information and fill it in. There is a how to get started area that you can modify and then the minimum technical skills required for each student to enter a course in the learning management system. The next link is the syllabus link. This is where you would add through the manage button a handout which would be your syllabus. Announcements are where you can post new announcements for the course. There's a setup feature that allows you to set up the way in which the announcements are laid out and designed. There is a subscribe feature and a view my subscriptions area. Coursework. This is one of the main features that will help you accomplish some of the tasks. This is where you add assignments, you look at your student list, you manage your units and types. Units refer to the 16 units that I mentioned on the at a glance page. You can edit each of those units. The types references the types of categories in your grade books. So the units and types are all managed right here under the coursework link. There is a configuration link and then view your gradebook. In the middle of the screen and on the lower part of the page, unit 1 to unit 16, you can use the add an assignment link within the unit. It's no different than adding an assignment at this link but this will actually code the assignment to the unit one. In this link, you would have to actually select the respective unit where you would want the coursework to be added. The forums 
link is where your discussion forums are laid out and added and created to the course. There's an area to edit the forum, subscribe to forums, the nomenclature of unread posts and replies and how that will look in your course. There are my posts and replies and user lists. And again, we'll cover this in other videos. The course resources is the other primary resource where you will add any handouts, presentations, any type of Word documents, PDF documents, and so on. You can also add bookmarks. These are URLs to other sites, uh, other sources, other areas of interest that you would want to include in your course. There's also a blog feature, which is highly used today in the New Age courses for students to be able to post thoughts, reflections. There are multiple uses for the blog and I highly encourage you to look into this particular feature. RSS feeds, for those who like to use RSS feeds, which could be from a, from a multitude of disciplines, health, political, history, and you simply subscribe to the RSS feeds. You can tell how many feeds you'd like it to have at one point in time, and they're constantly changing, and it is connected to an RSS feeder, which you click on a website that gives you the code to embed to make that RSS feed live and engaging for your students. The next link is the course objectives. Now, by default, we've added objectives 1 through 10. These would be where you can place your course objectives. These uh, objectives can be linked into different module or unit levels. The objectives links can be used to link your course objectives to module and unit objectives. If you're familiar with Quality Matters, you understand the concept of alignment where Course objectives are aligned with unit and module objectives, which are aligned with the instructional materials and the learner tools and technology uh, found in the course. And this is just an area where you can edit and type all of your objectives, and it is a linkable source throughout your, your whole course. The calendar feature, when Due dates are posted from coursework or resources that they need to be read. It's automatically added in to this calendar. You can add events. You can add other calendars. And this is a centralized area where all courses for students will list all of the assignments and all of the resources and elements that are due in a respective course. Gradebook, when you click that link, you will need to set up your gradebook. The attendance link, if you take attendance, you can set up how you want this to be viewed. You can manage the sessions, which are actual course meetings. If you have an on-ground course and you take attendance, this would be a valuable tool for you. And if you have an attendance grade in your gradebook and you're very prompt on keeping your attendance schedule up, this is a valuable tool. This element will be covered in a future video. The roster is where not only the faculty's listed and it's highlighted in a yellow, but also students. In the future, all of your students' photos will be inserted in here automatically. This is a pretty unique feature where you can select all of the individuals in your class or certain students. This is the main communication page where you would email your students. There's also a printable roster. Course information link, is static in nature. It cannot be moved or changed. It's part of the Genzabar Enterprise system. It looks like it'll list the faculty, emails, and when you scroll down, 
there's a description that is specifically the same description found in the bulletin that is automatically populated in the course for you. Part of the QM template is the institutional resources where we've listed the bookstore, student handbook and policies, testing center, proctoring, library service, all the necessary resources for students, specifically in an online course. If they're at distance and they need to get a hold of a respective department, the students can simply click on the institutional resources. There's an expand button that lists all of the different services. The course content import. If you have content from a publisher and it's in the common cartridge 1.0 version, you can choose the file from your local machine. There's an add a page link, which will be discussed in another uh, video, a context manager, and then usage statistics. Stay tuned for the third video in the series, which covers the quick links area.